And thank you very much for having me today and coming along. Great numbers, fantastic support, so well done today. Um, the overview of what I've, I've got about 10 minutes with you, so short and sweet, hopefully, this, uh, this, after, or this morning. We're going to run through um, some succession planning, and not the standard sort of, I want to sell my office style succession planning, but I've decided to go down a track of individual succession planning. How are you situated? Where are you going? What, what's happening in your world? So all those people in property management out there, stay, it'll stay relevant and it'll be okay. Um, recruitment planning for our business owners and for our officers, we're going to touch on that slightly. Um, how we can help you and accountable, accountable implementation. But before we go there, I'm just going to go in a different direction at the moment. Anybody out there seeing a change in the market at the moment? Nobody. Three people, thank you. Okay. Back in oh, end of March, early uh, April, I did a series of videos with David and the EAC team. And uh, luckily enough, we were predicting a change in the market around about uh, late winter, early spring. And what we're looking at there is a steadying in prices, a steadying in uh, a cooling off of the buyer interest. We have uh, lesser numbers coming to open homes, lesser numbers or less interested people through the open homes coming through, less registrations at our auctions. Anyone seeing what I'm seeing here? Few more inquiries coming through, few more listings hitting the books. Now, in some areas that's not happening, in other areas that's already happening, and the prediction is it's going to happen. So listings are going to come hard and fast. I've been working for a, quite a while now with a, an office in Blacktown. Blacktown's a really interesting market. It's right on the cusp um, of sort of West Sydney these days and getting closer to Parramatta on the east. And it starts to change first. So through New South Wales, when we see change, we see it come through in different places at different times. And Blacktown's really early. So we've been working for a while with that sales team to work our pipeline, predicting that we're going to get change, predicting we're going to get some listings. So that team has been listing about six maybe seven properties a month all year, um, which is for them fairly low numbers. But we've been working on this, working on this. They started to get a, a reduction in the, uh, in the interest at open homes. Their registrations went from five to two. Uh, they actually, the buyers didn't want to be the opening bidder. They had all the challenges that were going through their particular business. And so we're working with those particular things. We also were looking at our pipeline, talking to our pipeline and bringing our pipeline down saying, we're going to get more listings in spring. Come now, come now, come now. In July, that business listed 21, uh, yeah, in July, that business listed 21 listings. Uh, they, they're on track in their pipeline to list 30 for August. So we're looking at one of the early adopting suburbs where there's a change. Anyone in the offer, anyone here been in real estate less than five years? A few. For those of you who've been here longer, you may know how to manage your vendor's expectations. You may know how to talk to buyers and bring them through the buying system. A lot of us have been opening properties recently, maybe for the last three years, standing back, watching our buyers come through the door, taking offers. Yes? Getting deals done. We're talking about it today. Who was the man who had a vendor who wanted to sell it less than his agent's opinion? Good. Give me a call. I'll buy that. That's fine. It's, um, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for property in Wollongong at the moment, so I'll take that. Maybe if you get anyone who wants to give property away, but that's the prediction. So what we're going to, what's going to happen over the next three to six months is that we're going to end up with more stock, you beauty, but our buyers will turn. So you need to manage your sales team's expectations, manage your vendor's expectations. The overpriced vendor, anyone listed a property or sold a property in December last year, selling now, thinks they're going to get 10% more? Probably not. Your vendor will want 10% more, but at the moment where the changes are occurring, we're seeing an, a, an average of a levelling or maybe not even achieving what we received in December last year. So that may not have hit your market yet, and if it hasn't, well done. But keep your ear to the ground. It's the first or second, it was the third of August, and we've got August, September, October. The listings in November, I think you'll find, will be massive. So you need to you know, manage that, manage your buyers, work with your buyers very, very closely. Things we haven't had to do for a long, long time. Anyway, if you want to talk more about that, please feel free to give me a call. With succession planning, I've got to look for a raise hat. Who's got a personal will? Not everybody. 
This came up to me, I was working with a group of businesses down in Canberra earlier this year. And I'm working with this particular one guy, great business operator in his late 30s. Uh, he recently got married. He owns a business that's riding just about to write $2 million in sales, has about 400 managements, and he just bought a half ownership in a pub and two investment properties. And he was talking to him, and he did, it only recently got married. I said to him, his name was Will. I said, Will, have you altered your will since you got married? And he looked at me. I said, Will, you've got a will. He went, uh, no. So I was working with nine businesses in the ACT. Of those nine businesses, seven of the business owners did not have a current will. So I thought, mm, valid topic. Uh, if you die in test state in New South Wales, does anyone know what happens to your bank accounts? They're frozen. Does anyone know happen, knows what happens to your business bank accounts? Anyone got any property management? So Greg Jemison and I, maybe 10, 12 years ago, worked with a business in Sydney where the owner died intestate. 1,100 property managements. Macquarie Bank. So we've gone hand in cap, begging me, because Macquarie Bank have frozen the accounts for 1,100 property managements. So we got that done, but Macquarie Bank sent somebody down to watch us make every transaction that month. And we've gone and developed that business. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm looking at is for your personal world, Get out there, give Greg a call and his team, get your will sorted, um, because it happens, and update them regularly. For those people who are business owners, do you have a power of attorney for when you're out of the country? Do you have a situation in your business occurred that bills can be paid and your business can be run? If you don't turn up tomorrow, what happens? If you're the only one who is the decision maker in your business, what happens? What are the instructions, how clear they are? And the reason I brought these questions up is because this is part of running your business. These are part of some of the strategic questions that you need to ask yourself. And we get caught in the world of now, and we forget sometimes to think about planning. Very important little piece is something that I've discovered is the living will. So you're not dead. So your current will doesn't kick in. What happens next? But you're unable to function, or you're unable to make decisions, or you're, you know, this is not a great topic, but it happens. You're responsible for 10, 15, 20 people's income, salaries, rent, family, and you're not there to make it happen. What happens? It can be arranged legally, but you need to put it into place. So just some ideas for you to think about, some business continuation insurance, especially if you're a partner, your partner's not there, your business partner, can you guarantee their income? Yes, you can. It's one of the, I hate insurance really, but it's one of the insurances that you really should have a look at. So some of the ideas that you can do, and business and estate planning. So I just thought I'd mention that today because I came across this in a group of businesses and it was a real challenge. All those business owners have gone out now and managed their expectations. And as good business owners, apart from Will, everyone else was in their late 40s to mid 50s. And these things may come up in their world in the future. The other one I'd like to do, anyone love to have a good salesperson or property manager in their business today? A new one. If you've got a great salesperson, would you take them on? Yes? Am I talking to myself again? No? You don't need a great salesperson? Yes. What do we do about it on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? So what we'd like to do and work with you is put a plan into place. This is not difficult. When you're out looking at the pipeline of listings for, as a property manager, where you're going to go out and get your new customers, or a pipeline of listings as a salesperson, and you work that pipeline, and every week, every day, every week, you work on your prospects. What do you do around recruitment? So it's fine to set up some time, it's best to set up some time, even half an hour a day, where you're thinking about recruitment. We normally recruit when someone resigns. And then we go out and find the pool of people who are looking for, prop, for, for, um, for a job right now, and we choose somebody from there. So we recruit a position, not a person. So always have in your mind, when you're out looking at retail stores, you might be down the road getting your car washed, you might be you know, out shopping, you might be getting a, you know, getting a coffee at a restaurant. Be aware of someone who has really good service. Skills can be trained, attitude and aptitude cannot. And so always be aware, have them, flick them a card, invite them for a meeting and see what you're doing. Also in your world, your local is really, really important. Your local community, people love to work locally. You can get a job in Sydney, or you can work locally and be at work, get home for the kids, come back to work again. So it's really important, that's what we do in small business, um, and that's one of our big, big advantages. 
These days, social media and recruitment is absolutely key. If your social media is not up to date, either for your sales, for your recruitment, you need to, whatever it may be. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever it may be, you need to be across just about everything. And your personal network. If you're looking to recruit, make it known all the time. Do you know anyone who wants a job? Let them come and talk to me. You don't have to employ, but you do have to meet. So some of these ideas and putting a plan and structure that you are accountable for, and the team and myself, we will keep you accountable. So part of what we do, does anyone seen SMART goals before? They're pretty common, old way to do it. Specific, measurable, action oriented realistic, and time-bound goals. I like to work in 90-day locks. It's great to have long-term goals, but realistically, what I'm gonna be doing in August 2018 is anyone's guess. So for the next 90 days, 180 days, 270 days, I like to break it down, plan, and have a few goals here and there that we can actually achieve time bound and get going. I get people, I get coaches to hold me accountable to what I'm doing, and I can, we can hold you accountable, work with you. We work in your office. We don't work remotely. We come down, we work in your office with your teams on a face-to-face -face basis, either weekly, fortnightly, or monthly. Most of us are working in the whirlwind. So, has anyone missed any calls today? Anyone got any emails that they have unread at the moment? So when we leave this training session today, what are we gonna do? We're gonna check our emails, we're gonna make some phone calls, yep. So when are we gonna implement some of the good ideas that you've heard today? Because tomorrow you'll be busy, and the next day you'll be busy. So what you have to do is set some time aside to actually take the ideas that you get today and make them work. And this is what we're good at. That's what a coach will do for you. Pull your business together, just stop it, set some goals, and work towards those goals so you can go from where you are. We live about 95% of our day in the whirlwind. And then we're supposed to spend the five days on, the 5% on the goals and, and uh, the, the new activities area, we get distracted. So we rarely, rarely get out there and plan properly. Now you don't have to plan because a lot of us have got really good businesses and a lot of us are in a comfort zone and we're comfortable there and we've done okay and we're very good. But for those people who want to achieve a little bit more, who want to get out of the comfort zone, who want to get to where the magic happens, we can help you do that. How can I help you? Our goal is we'll come into your business and gain an understanding of how your business is running. We'll choose a couple of points to help you at a time and move them forward. We won't try and change the world all at once. We can create solutions together, and as I've proven today, I learn from you, whether it be Blacktown, whether it be ACT, whether it be here. And we pass that information around because we get to see lots of different businesses, what's going well, what's not. I'm external, I'm not aligned, no preconceived ideas, and experienced. So I'm one of the guys you call a lifer in real estate, out of school. Um, spent 16 years selling in the eastern suburbs, opened a business, shut a business for five years, lived off the uh, smell of an oily rag. Didn't do that well, but very, very experienced at um, opening and closing a business. Have opened and closed other businesses that did far better. I made all the mistakes, I can help you avoid them. So it's one of those things you have somebody experienced who's been there, worked hard, done well, done not so well. Fresh and accountable. My goal here is to keep you accountable, to keep your team accountable. So today, a couple of ideas for you to take away. Have a look at your own personal lives. Make sure your own personal life is in order. You know, speak to the guys who are here through, um, through the EAC group who can help you. And if you want to work with uh, uh, CCE, then let us know. We can execute strategy and uh, get some implementation happening. Thanks very much, David Coleman. Appreciate your time today.